There's no place to escape to. This is the last time. On the left. Side stories. Yeah, your That's when the cannibalism started. Side, Side stories. stories. <laughs> yes. Well, that was the thing, that photo of him holding up the pants that he used to wear when he was all big and chunky. Uh, that was actually where he would hide the kids. Whoa, yes, no is, way. It, yes. In his like little in fupa his, pocket. Yeah. Because you can slap a whole embryo up under a big man's mm-hmm. fupa pocket if you want to. And, uh, and that's where I feel like us as men can truly be allies in the war against abortion. Because what oh. we can do is help people. Because what I've heard is, number thing you can do is you evict the fetus out. Sure, it's an eviction notice. You call the you call your local man mandrake, what's your court? What's the name of a judge? Doctor. You call that you person call up. Doctor. First of all, you're going to get a court order against the baby inside of you. Rent's this too how you, damn high. This is how we do it legally in the yes, legal state. That's right? great. And, you go, and then so the police come to evict the fetus out of you. It's really not the way right? it works. Yeah, yeah, but just okay. imagine if it Imagine would, if imagine. it would. Cartoon. They kick the fetus out, right? Now the fetus yeah. is now homeless, right? Yeah, it's but got we'll, a little knapsack. Yeah, absolutely. It's, yes. it's, it's bindled and it's down oh, by the tracks, right? Oh. But then what you can do is, as a bigger man, come by, scoop up the fetus, you mm-hmm. put it underneath the fupa, and you could take it wherever you want to any other part of the country. Uh, and then, indeed. Because then you're allowed to, I think, put it in a trash can in a state where it's legal. That's fantastic. It's called the old kangaroo move. And I'm just so happy that you started with that completely non-controversial intro. I, I you um, know. Non-controversial I, at all, and I think powerful. I, I, all I important. know is, I'm just, our advertisers asked. I know. For more hot topic issues. <laughs> uh, they want more calls from I various know. organizations. They're yep. really, really excited for it. And that's what I provide because, mm. again, I'm Zenry now. Zenry, I'm Zen ca- Henry. I'm calm. I'm ready to go. I'm moving forward. I knock my BP down fucking 10 points on either side. That's and, actually very impressive, Henry. And, so absolutely. you're 161 10. Yeah, absolutely. And you know what I did is then I I, I tipped the doctor and he gave me five more. <laughs> 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 Isn't that sad? <laughs> Health is the only thing that you can't tip away and no, make it I, just sweep it under the rug. It seems to be that's like a like yeah. a lesson the moneyed learn. I want to die the way that that one icon died. What was his name? Big old boy, Soprano. Mr. Monopoly. Yes, he's still alive. All right. Jared Fogel boasted about sexually abusing minors in Thailand. And he says, boast. he says, we can get away with whatever age we want. And then uh, he said that, but now he's in jail. And I'm not sure if he mentions that anymore. I really wish that. Um, How did that get out? I don't From know. There's a, new, there's a new documentary. Okay, so this is the thing. Oh, right, so welcome to Side Stories. Welcome ben to Kissel, Side to Stories. I'm Ben and Henry. Thank you for taking care of that for this episode. I got fogled. Because I also did the subway diet, and we all did. We all did it. We were all at the end of the day dragged into that fucking psyop. All it is is just eating seven hundred calories a day as opposed to like twenty five hundred. Yes, it's just it it could have been anything. Exactly, it is just it was calorie monitoring, and it's about portion size and in eating sometimes a less salted turkey, which I and also not getting the meatball. I learned that the hard way. I said, I'm on the subway diet. I'll have two foot long meatballs. That's not, again, it Can't just, do it. you couldn't just walk into a subway and then whatever you ate was diet food. No, it's absolutely not. And technically it's not even bread in Ireland. It has to be recorded as cake. We know. It is documented as cake officially because of all the carbs and sugar. But anyway, the one thing I'm just going to say about the Jared Fogel coverage is. Oh, one thing good. They say a lot of stuff about how he skyrocketed to fame mm. in the early 2000s. He was never like. It wasn't like Jack Nicholson, Jared Fogel. No, no, no. He no, was no. a pitch man who it, was who had who would wear big pants like see, he used to wear. But he was never. I just feel like we're taking this word fame very liberally. Yes, yes. It is a thing that's happened over the last couple of years where it seems that people with no like discernible ability. He or, wasn't even a good pitch man. He wasn't. It's just a thing that just because they are famous and then they're equated to everybody else who's famous around The him. only thing he had to do was to not molest a series of children like and then the admit one, it on a radio show. It's like the one thing. That, that was he, it. He could have done truly 
he could have killed a woman. And sure. we could have figured it out. Could have figured it we out. We could have gotten a PR team in there, and we I really could have dug it up. I guess maybe that day he ate Arby's. Oh, he must have been off. We he have must the have been meats, off. a.k.a. But, the dead woman. Absolutely. Look at O.J. Simpson weighing in on the Alec Murdoch <laughs> trial. And you, this guy is now, first of all, when did he become Scatman Crothers? Well, have OG's you seen him? Old. I know. Have OJ's you seen, in no, a new face. I'm not saying his face. I'm saying that there's a portrait behind OJ in the video where he is very concisely wrapping up juror like kind of mentality and what happens yeah. once a cop lies on the stand. And he's like, he you know, in my case, it did happen to work for me. And you're like, yeah, it did. Yeah, well, it did. It really did. The but then, thing about OJ is his his Murdoch coverage on Twitter that he gave for three three solid minutes. It was the most concise coverage I had heard yet. It was a solid so, breakdown, which I don't like. Again, I'm not throwing to him, but still. But if you notice, if you look behind him in the in that that footage, yeah. there's a full painting of just a naked woman. Huh. But you see, he came up. He, that's why Scott huh. Crothers. He's coming all the way back around, which no, shows nice. anybody can figure out. How to work their PR back to zero? There, the, we had to get it back, all their PR yeah. notes back up. As long as you don't fuck a child, mm. and then it's the boasting. Because I said that to Fernando before we started. Is that I feel like that's of all the things that Jared Fogel is guilty of. Um, besides just lying to us about the sandwiches, it's well. the it's the hubris. It if that's really what it is. is. It's the pride. I think that is like that's the crime. I think he should be labeled with the highest. So, and I, because I am, I do my utmost to try to be humble. Thinking yeah. about what I've brought and what I've given to and it, everyone. And it's so difficult to be humble in our position of high power with Hollywood. Look at you me, remember man. all those times? Remember when we were at the uh, what was it? The Grammys yesterday? Remember when we went to that and the Oscars and stuff? Oh no, no, no! We were. At, it was called the Slammies, oh. and it was a gay sex award ceremony. And I gotta say, uh, wowie wow! Bring a tarp next time. Absolutely. So Rochelle <laughs> Herman, she was a radio host, and she said we need a big guest today, and so she got Jared Fogel. Because how exciting. I and mean, was at he's, that point, uh, I feel like he's available. He was. And this is when Jared Fogel says, we can do whatever we want. He says, you go to, it's crazy. You go over there to Thailand. You got different ages. I mean, you just sort of choose what you want and there's a price for it. I hate this. And, and then off you go. I don't like this for now. And then he says, and then off you go. Um, but then she said, oh, that's real creepy Why and is gross. he still bragging? You don't off you go. You don't. Well, you actually, you don't. You end up in jail, which is where he is. He's calling from jail. You actually, can I have my music? Well, you actually yes, you cannot are upset. actually say that you got off scot-free for a crime that you committed. Right. If you are currently in a jail cell. Well, no, this trying is. Trying to. Okay. It's pre previously, is this was previous. Uh, Jared did lose 245 pounds. Applaud. Very good. And then now, because of all of his disgusting activities, he's part of a new three-part documentary series called Jared from Subway, Catching a Monster. And it's going to be premiering on ID. And we don't get paid to say that. No. But I just think that it's going to be um, extremely traumatizing. And if you're Subway, you know what you have to do is make this go away somehow. I feel like, like Subway. Like if you're Subway, you oh, really got to get like, no, 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 like no, come no. on. I'm sorry, buddy. Even Mickey. What did Mickey Mouse do? No uh, one's talking about his Nazi years. Kissel, I'm going to throw this to somebody else. Because you know what? Subway technically did what they did. They threw out every copy of those pants. That they had in any distribution center. They burned them. I remember when we did that. So Subway did yeah. all that it can, and it's too late for Subway. Technically, this is Quiznos moment. Wow. And Quiznos, they need to send some form of spy into this organization, and they need to tear it apart from the inside out. Because, I agree. again, because Quiznos, they had, they, number one, they had those great commercials. E Quiznos subs. Right. They, because they are good they for had the thing, you. Right. They, they already were coming out the gate. And then they had that little weird guy as their spokesperson. Little but Quizno. Guess what that little Quizno never did? What? Had sex systematically with a bunch of children well, in a world, you. went to do sexual, as far as I know. I don't, I want to say. Well, it's not a real thing. Of all of the people that weren't on Epstein's flight list, I imagine the Quizno wasn't. Mm. I don't even think the Noid was on that list. No, I don't think the Noid ever did anything wrong whatsoever, except for deliver fast, hot pizzas right to your door. Yes. Of but course, uh, Domino's did have to go on and later apologize for the quality of such pizza, which then did improve. It did. However, now it's decreased. And you know who's back? Little Sneezers. Little Caesars pizza is on fire. It's the best fast food pizza you can get. I've said it here and I'm not going to say it again. Well, all we, well, he, has, he will. 
he definitely will because he has he has said it multiple times. And again, we've received not a single dime. We've not received a dime. No. From Little Caesars. No, sponsors are pulling at. They are. So, People are mad. People yeah. are mad. But guess what? We, uh, we we're hold doing the it line. Bad. We're doing it wrong. No, no, no. No, 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 no. Yeah. Because it's our jobs. Yeah. Right? As, ooh, hot shot. Hot shot <laughs> yeah. content creators. Yeah. Our yeah. jobs are to push people back. We're, we're setting the tone, all right, for the rest of the country. Absolutely. Which is why we, first of all, Alec Murdoch got you. They got him. Mm. Alec Murdoch was, I believe, how long did they deliberate? I was like two hours. Was he was like, sentenced. It was like less than yeah. our podcast on David Miscavige. It was, and uh, he got sentenced to two life sentences. Boom, his brother. Boom. He shaved uh, his head. He's looking more like a fucking skinny, weird, some version of a very sick supervillain. To be honest with you, he's going to do fantastic in jail because all of these prisoners, because well, they, the need legal legal system, they need legal advice. Of course. He's going to be busier. Than then ever, ever. He's going to have a little plaque outside of his jail cell. This is Murdaugh Law, and it's going to be a nightmare also, but at the same time, he'll be just fine. His brother, Alex Murdaugh's brother, says he does think Alex knows more than he's letting no, on. No, no way! What? I don't know. No fucking way! I don't know. But what about the other brother that went on the stand and told us all that he pooped his fucking pants? I'd do that for you. I, I if you, you better. were charged with murder, I'd be like, one time Henry shat his pants in Philadelphia. Mm. I was there! But the thing is, you'll know is that I won't ever murder again because I'm calm now. And uh, the what I've done, I've chilled my blood so thoroughly. I, I can't even, I don't even know how I'm going to continue to rant. I'm so calm now. So this was a, uh, this was down in Peru. This was the delivery drivers. Now, what I do not know is that in Peru, apparently you're not allowed to, you go to a holy site there, right? If you go, like, I don't know if this is true for every country, there's a ruins, right? And all that yes. kind of shit. Where you yes. go and you you go to this, like, a beautiful kind of historical site. But you're not allowed to drink on site. Like alcohol or yes, water? they're not. And so this guy... Water. They found this guy. They saw him. He was drinking alcohol. You're like, drink water. But he was oh, drinking okay. alcohol, right? He was just hanging out by her some ruins. Well, most um, holy sites, most religions allow some kind of alcohol for religious cer ceremony. I, side stories, LPOTL at gmail.com. Explain to us. I actually don't know why we're not allowed to drink alcohol at this place. But he was, uh, they they saw him there, right? They saw that he was drinking next to this, this historical kind of religious Getting site. Sure. And then uh, they he had a bag with him. They said, they want to check the bag. And the bag was from a takeout restaurant that's big there called Perdidas Ya. Oh, Perdidas right? Ya. Yeah, yeah. So they were like, oh, okay. And they opened up and when they found inside it was a 600 to 800 year old mummy, which was, it's a 40. Wait a second, what? Oh, yeah, yeah. How big is this mummy, man? Four foot 11. You got a four foot 11 mummy in, in a to-go bag, bag right? from now, a fast food joint? How many? How much food are people ordering from this spot? I don't really know. They said they, they showed the skeleton in the bag. They went up to the guy. They said, hey, what is this? And they yeah, said, what, what is, is it? They thought, because first of all, so they're the like. The number five with the, with the Diet Coke and some fries? <laughs> 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 but they went to look at, right? And they're like, yeah. oh, okay, why do you have this? Did you steal this from this place? Or is there? He's like, no, 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 no. I did not steal this. No, 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 no. That is Juanita. And they're like, what? That's Juanita? And you're like, yep, yes, see, see, see. He yes. says, it sleeps in my bedroom with me. Yes, there is my bed. There's the TV set. And next to it, there's Juanita. Well, I take care of it. Nice. He said that it's run in his family for 30 years and he takes care of it. And he says, and according to his words, he said, if you, hmm. we just, I don't know why he said pardon the expression, but he said, it's like if you'll pardon the expression as if it were my spiritual girlfriend, right? Yes, and they're indeed. like, he says a spiritual oh, okay. girlfriend. But guess what, man? What? It's not a mummy. Oh. It's a daddy. Oh. They went and they looked at it, and guess what? It's dude. Well, you can be a dude mummy. Yeah, yeah, sure. Yeah. But he was well, calling it Juanita, and he's saying that he's kissing and loving buddy, on this thing. Post-death. Well, are we still going to be doing this post-death? All I'm saying, yeah, I hope we all get more woke when we die. Mm -hmm. And allow ourselves to be truly, truly of any, of any type of gender. But well, yeah, he's fucking a dude. Well, I don't think he's having sex with the mummy. It would dissolve around. He called it a girlfriend. Yeah. yeah. She's doing something You've never had a loveless it. girlfriend relationship where you have a girlfriend and you don't have sex with them? I think it's happened before to all of us. Yoink. Yoink. Someone mark me as red. But I will say, it does look as if the mummy is about to give birth. The legs are up. The knees are at its shoulder. No, it's you just can squished. See the, it's squished. Yes, yeah, it wasn't it's been a mid-birth. Yeah, I don't but think it was the thing that birth. I like about this guy is he brought his girlfriend, yes, it's a male mummy, to work with him because he was a delivery driver. 
And isn't that nice when you call up yes. Uber Eats and you say, man, my, my Carl's Jr. smells like, whoa, was there a dead person in that guy's car? You know, because it smells a little funny. <laughs> you're but full of it today. I am full of it. But then it turns out, yes, there was a 600 to 800 year old mummy in that delivery person's car. This is why I don't, this is why I don't knock on the doors. I don't knock on the window. The, the delivery driver, that's their office. Oh, sure, sure, the sure. The car sure. Their is their home. office. It's their that's home, their absolutely. Home. Oftentimes it's their home. And so I don't invade that. That's like knocking on the door of, of your boss. You know, if, they're, if the office door is closed, you don't come and knock it, you know. That, that is not even with, a saying. With That's Matt like, Lauer wait, there. He, he tried to. Matt Lauer was committing crimes. Yeah, maybe. Um, but uh, this mummy, he said he tried to give it to a museum and they wouldn't take it. Well, it's because the mummified male is estimated to have been more than 45 years of old. Yes. And, but I don't think that the museum wants it. Um, because it's it's um it's it's old goods. Yeah, it's garbage. The museum is like, yeah, you fucked this so many Did you times. Hear Kissel, what? Did you hear what the Peruvian mummy said about his trip down to to to, to the tourist spots? Here, he said it. What about it? What did he say about he it? He says it wasn't all that it's wrapped up to be. Yep, yep, indeed. Can I have my music? So please? Juanita. What I need you guys all to understand is that Juanita needs a new boyfriend. I've, I'm changed because I'm now as calm as I am. My humor may change. Make it worse. You say worse. I say calm. modern. Because not what's modern. not what's better than a modern comedy? That wasn't modern. What I love about modern comedy is the fact that it mostly makes you feel bad about watching it. Because it's kind of lecturing you about what you should find funny. And that's what we plan to do a lot more around here. Think about Hillary Clinton, how we did her wrong. Well, I, know, I think someone every else just recently I, died in her orbit. Every day I sp I shed one tear, wondering if Hillary Clinton's okay. She's and when fine. she's going to run again. <laughs> Can't wait. Live from your grave. Okay, well, let's move on. An ex-army <laughs> private. He got 45 years in prison for this a This is a whole, another story we have to wait on because I told Why? you we're doing an entire episode on this whole this whole thing. We can't talk about this right now as no, a teaser? No, it is an extremely, extremely thick, complicated story. Guy got 45 years because you got mad at his troop. He got mad at his paratroop Fine, because he was, Jesus. he was indoctrinated by the Order of the Nine Angles and he was well, said that's it was an a whole, angle. That's an angle. It's an entire, it's nine I of was going to be more It's like, nine angles. Please, Fernando. <sighs> okay. We did a rundown right before the show. No, I know. It's just, it seems like. No, because it's a very like, complicated story. It's a lot of ins and outs. And yeah. every single time I just thought we, could we do, do a, a little, story we could that just we're not prepared for, no, it's fine. we get in trouble. Somebody gets mad. No one's ever us. mad. No one's ever mad. No one's ever mad. Okay. Well, then let's do something in my wheelhouse. Disney had pulled the song lyrics from Song of the South. They pulled the word zip a doo -dah. I just, I can't. This is so another. Isn't that exciting? We're just going to lose everything. Zippity doo dah. We're no gonna lose everything. I don't know why. We're going to lose everything. That's gone. Yeah, it's just a whole, it's a whole cultural thing. It's a it's whole a thing. Cultural it's a cultural thing. thing. All right, here we go. Maybe you'll like this story, Henry. Oh, God. Mom shot family minutes before deputies arrived to evict them from their foreclosed Ohio township home. You know what? Do you like this? Joke's on you. I love this story. It's fantastic. <laughs> Teresa Kane, she shot her family members, <laughs> killing three of them I just really... minutes before deputies hey, were coming. It's enough with these Ohio train wrecks. <laughs> That's good. <laughs> Man, your blood pressure must be that real <laughs> nice. I, my blood pressure this morning actually was at 40 over negative five. The sheriff was Steve Leahy. Uh, perhaps he was drunk like Mr. Leahy from Trailer Park Boys. Well, this so, story is interesting. This story is interesting yeah. because, again, mm -hmm. what do we have? Teresa Kane, a an Ohio mom. Uh, she was facing eviction. But mm -hmm. I don't know what happened. There, we, out. There's not a lot of uh, details quite she yet. She couldn't pay rent. She couldn't pay rent. Yeah, that's why you um, evicted. And I feel like no one in the family knew that she couldn't pay rent. Right? I mean, like I think they found out probably the hard way. Well, because what happened was that she waited up to a period of time when they were getting notices, they were getting eviction notices, and then as the eviction police were hanging out, when you know the eviction police probably love this. It's just the sheriff. They're, they're, because they're, they're whatever it is, right? But then she murdered her entire family and then killed herself, except for the the one of her daughters escaped. So yes. one her kid lived. So the mother killed her husband, Stephen Kane. Uh, then the son, Ethan Kane, and then the elderly father, William Fenton, who was in the house. El I William Felton. I would name my kids Michael and Dean if my last name was Kane. Of course, absolutely. Michael Kane, Dean Kane. No. Actor, Superman. No, Kane. Everybody's named Kane. 
Kane Kane, Kane Kane 2. <laughs> and that's how we do it. We can keeping it fun, doing something different. <laughs> Kane Kane. Kane Kane. Okay, uh, so but the yes, as the eviction police were arriving. It's just the sheriff. They just heard I thought that they sent special guys in. I thought no, they sent guys with like with swinging no, maces and then really, a guy with a big net. It's like super brutal. And like yeah, cops are like, I came here to defend the law and to help people, but then and it's you're like, go kick people out of their homes. You just kick people out of your homes. That's yeah, what yeah. you do there. So a deputy knocked on the front door and then the back door, no one answered. And then the deputy stepped inside the home and called out, hey, hello. And then he heard a muffled, no, 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 no. Very good. And then it was followed by a very fast secession of gunfire. Yes. So he also heard the gunshots. Yes. She fired five gunshots in just under 3.5 seconds. And this is why you never teach your wife how to shoot a gun. When deputies were able to safely venture further into the home, they found her dead along with a 13-year-old son and her 74-year-old yes. father. But the kid, That's very sad. I believe the 20-year-old daughter, Samantha Kane, she got she lived and she remains Critically in critical hurt. condition. But it shows more because the what do we learn about family annihilators? The more and more you look at it is like, yes, first of all, good work, girls. You got one. <laughs> I'm so glad the ladies finally got one, one for, for your team. For, one for the mothers. But it, it it's the same conditions. It is what we are extremely afraid of in the United States of America in particular. Not only we, do we have easy access to the guns that allows you to murder a group of people in a very quick succession, but also uh, the idea that once you're put into a certain economic place, Ooh. that you're fucked, right? It, like, she is, like, she looked at this as a, a set of conditions, which, like, I mean, again, I'm, we always are going to say... I love that you're trying to circle this back, not just into Gallo's humor, but to make a, a nice social commentary. It's a cogent point, right? It's a cogent point. I, but you know what the most interesting thing is? Her husband, Stephen... But it's is, about conditions. Annihilations are about conditions way more than about specific mental illness. Sometimes people are just assholes. I'm sure, absolutely, but you have to be an asshole to kill your family. That's a that's an also your your that's baked in. Maybe they just said subway that day. Stephen Kane, he was the dad. He was just on the couch downstairs. <laughs> yeah, man. So what was he doing to pay the goddamn rent? Wow, wow. The sheriff said their investigation determined determined that she. Oh well, she she did shoot him first. Yes, she shot him first. He wasn't yes. just lying there. Um, uh, he was no. dead. It's it is because Alec Murdoch again. That story is the story of a family annihilator. That now we have seen it splay all completely out. Completely, like we now see all the in and outs of like someone's fall from grace. But this is somebody Teresa mm. Kane who was just a normal mom that had the same set of circumstances where they. Uh, I am going to go out on a limb and say that if you are a family annihilator, I don't think you necessarily came upon all of your issues. By like everybody else's fault. That's something like a family annihilator would probably say, blame the whole mm. world, saying you've made me do this because no one's making you do this. But it is interesting to see. Sometimes they do blame others and don't take responsibility. Th that's why it's don't kill your family, just abandon them. Absolutely. Just go run. Abandon them. Just run. Just get in a car. You could drive down to Mexico. Sure. You could fucking like do your whole thing. Go down. Like you can live a whole life apart from your family. Let and them the, live. The kids will say, I was abandoned, but then they're going to turn into great entertainers. Absolutely. Make them want it. There's all, you need the void to be successful in this country. And I see that, you know, I was watching yeah. the new Next in Fashion show. I love my fashion shows. I didn't know that. I love all the fashion shows. Well, I love Next in Fashion. Yes. I love, I love fashion shows because Why? I, because I love them? seeing how, incorrect I am about what is fashion. Like, no, I love being they, like, they I like want, that thing. I think they, like, it's fun. They don't though. want like, you to wear those things. They don't. No. That's for them. If you start dressing like that, then they're going to change the fashion. That's the idea. Yeah. yeah that's the whole point. Right. This is, that's why, that's why we're, that's our revenge against the young <laughs> is that we steal it from them and we make it not relevant anymore. But there was this one girl, which is, I do is her name is Amari. She's a wonderful designer on it. And she was complaining about how much pressure her military parents gave her. The whole time I was watching, I was like, that's good. I'm glad they put you under that pressure. Because now look at you, you're crushing it in design, right? right. Yeah, everyone was mad before. Eh, they didn't love me. Eh, right, they didn't fucking right. hug me. Yeah, fucking me too, dude. Now, you don't think what? my fucking father wasn't fucking around either, dude? Well, but your you dad need was that fun. fucking layer of grit to give you a chip on your shoulder that allows you to move upwards. And there's also and a lot of there's a lot of very successful people with completely normal I loving childhood. I fucking and don't believe that. There are. I refuse there to believe are. that, please. There are. I re Stephen and Teresa Kane because purchased the two-story no, 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 three-bedroom. Because if you are a successful child, what, just a, be a doctor. 
Don't get into show business. Do anything else. They do often. They do. They do. Yeah, there's a lot of great people with great family stories in show business. I um, refuse to believe it. Jonah Hill. Look at him. Yeah, his parents were completely embedded in show business. He was acting since he was a child. Exactly. I've never heard him say one damn bad thing about him. Stephen and Teresa came <laughs> purchased a two-story, three-bedroom home in 1990 for 212000 What a time, huh? Look at those prices. <laughs> Look at those prices. 212000 for yeah, a two-story, three-bedroom? Well, guess what? She wow. fucked it up. Well, and did. now she killed her whole fucking family and herself. And it's not good. Yeah, it's very sad. I, I, oh, man, that's scary, though. They get, you know, especially coming from mom. Except we were scared of my mom, so I don't know. Yeah, I actually think there is something more scary about it coming from mom, but also, like, more calming because you were already, like, with your mother in the womb, and you are like, okay, mom. Yeah, sure, yeah, I'm a mama's me. boy, so I'd be like, all right, mom. All right, mom, I guess I should die. I guess I should die now, but um, she would never do that to me. She would just take me to Piggly Wiggly and s- kill me slowly with that business, although she was the very good. The good way. That's the, the true way. loving way. Uh, yeah. We actually have a good, there's a little bit of a tease before an upcoming big interview we have is that uh, we got Jeremy Corbell and George Knapp just went and put out another vo- video footage they dropped. It's this thing that they're calling the the Baghdad Cylinder. And it is this really, if you look this up, it's very, very interesting. They dropped this new, this is footage over Baghdad of a, it's, it's pretty solid. I love that song. Cylinders over Baghdad. Cylinders over Baghdad. This is good. The Baghdad Phantom is what they're calling it. If you see this, there's like a line, it's like a a kind of little propulsion line coming up in the back of this. Propulsion. If you see this, it's like a cylinder. It looks like a bullet and it flew across these, these radar screens. Screens that were during pretty, a raid. We look hefty. at this. It's hef- it's hefty. It's real. It's something strange. I mean, I'm who knows now because now we're supposed to be shooting them out of the sky, right? That's like the new thing. Now we're going to be shooting them out of. Maybe well, if we find them, we're shooting. Them. I have because you notice we have not shot anything since two weekends ago. I well, that is two. It's fourteen days ago. Yeah, it's like not a lot of time. They got it's plenty of time. <laughs> yeah, but. We're expected to put out episodes every week. Yeah, but they, they need to be shooting down objects all the time. No, we want us. We want this show to be able to be all about fun times. You're right. Um, but anyway, uh, balloon enthusiasts are quite upset because everyone's just shooting their fucking balloons out of the sky. I know, but they, so you can also some just of these like balloons. balloons. People want the stolen valor moment. They do want a little these, bit of these, that. These fucking balloon whores. Yeah, I'm going that far. I'm going that hard. They All they want is to have their precious balloons be in the middle of the mainstream media. Right? But it wasn't balloons. It was one of tunnel them, objects. One of them was a balloon. It was balloon-like. No, the Chinese balloon. That was one. That was a that balloon. That was a balloon. Yeah, that, that was, was a balloon. balloon. The Solid. other ones were specifically <laughs> not balloons. Well, either way. All right. So a, uh, <laughs> I, I am great. Uh, you are going nuts today. I'm uh, feeling let's it. see. Well, there's two people that appeared in court on kidnapping charges. Uh, this one woman went to go sell him her AR-15. AR stands for Armalite. Thank you. And, uh, and so she was going to go sell him this Armalite thing. <laughs> and then they were like, oh, thanks for the gun. And then they kidnapped her. Yep. So I guess she should have kept the gun. Well, it's really hard because didn't she... Is in the story that she took the dr- the guns to sell four drugs. Yeah, three hundred bucks. Yeah, she well, she owed uh, apparently she owed an out of state drug dealer three hundred bucks. You see, it's a, again that's very difficult. But then she was gonna yeah. then she stole his gun to sell, ah. and then she got kidnapped trying to sell the gun. Now it feels like this There's woman. It this woman's got a lot on her plate. And I, I, I'm fucking very, very busy as well. I get it. So, but Sounds you know what like, you need to do? You know what this woman needs? What? Google Calendar. Yeah, that's true. She needs true. Uh, contact sync because sounds like there's something that's fell in the wayside here. Uh, she needs to be Lincoln and Siri. She needs to talk to Siri. Yeah. Because I feel like Siri, somebody, because obviously she doesn't have anybody in her life that's helping her with good advice. Yes, indeed. Because this is like a lot of things have happened to lead to the point where you're stealing a gun to pay a drug yeah. dealer for lost drugs. I think that's what one of our Uber drivers was doing on the way to Iowa. 
Oh, I remember. Yes, yeah, he was yeah. sweating. Oh, that was scary. Yeah, that was. We real, almost all died. That was we really fucking. That was a dude that had worked all night at the Pacers game. That's what he, he said. He says that he was up all night working, quote unquote, security at a Pacers I game. I don't think any of it's and true. Then, I don't know what it was, but then he was driving real erratic. And then I remember I went to go piss at the urinal, and then our driver got into the urinal next to me, and yeah. he was just like, "Yep, yep, I'm. Oh, uh, yeah, I'm. I'm in Indy right now." Yeah, I mean, we were we were three hours from Indianapolis, and he was just like, "Yeah, yeah, I'm right there right now." Yeah, yeah, I'll see you at my house. I'll see you at my house. And he was like saying this shit, and you're like, "What is your whole like the wire life? Do you have a whole like weird kind of true? There's there's obviously true crime is attached to you." Yes, indeed. Live from your grave. So Mac Mac Varnum and Nicole Cloutier, they're both of Peachum. Um, they kidnapped this woman. They bound her in duct tape, put a bag over her head, and then placed a rag with chemicals on it around her face and drove around with her in a truck before the woman was able to get free. According to the prosecutor in charging documents, mm. uh, Varnum, I feel like everybody's in trouble in this scenario. People, yes. I feel like this scenario, everybody's in trouble because the guys that kid, so these are the people that are arrested for kidnapping the woman that stole the gun from them. So Varnum expressed outrage and said he wanted to kill the woman mm. who had been living with him after she allegedly took his truck to get drugs and had stolen and sold his Armalite 15 rifle. Life is really hard. Love is hard, especially. And yes. you really have to remember in marriages, when it comes down to it, 50 percent, everything's 50, 50, 50, 50. And in that relationship, yes, you might have both been sort of intoxicated, sleeping in a flop house like next to each other. But in that way, because you ever seen the romance of junkies? Is it a movie? Or? No, no, like just seeing like junkies in love on the street. No, I don't. That kind of passion, well, I've seen, I the passion I'm, that comes from two people actively I've, on heroin or methamphetamine and yeah, like how nice they tent, feel. Like, yeah. yeah, I've seen, sure. Yeah. It's that, lo there's drama in there. It's like Real oh, Housewives. Drama. The Real there's Housewives of fucking the, the 101. There's a lot and of drama. It, it's incredible it's, to see. Yeah, because this seems like, I, I wish I could get a counselor in there because I really think that what they need is a roundtable discussion with Andy Cohen. I mean, could somebody yes. to really ask them the questions being Tough like questions but what is it why what was why was the gun so special to you well the woman told the police that about a month earlier she and two other people had stolen the ar-15 from varnum they sold it for 300 bucks to an out-of-state drug dealer which let's be honest that's a steal for a fucking ar oh yeah it sounds like you're buying it from a desperate junkie and it's a hot rifle that then you can use in a series of crimes. She stated that Varnum was upset about his gun being sold and that she was supposed to get the AR back, but she couldn't because, because it's gone now. It's been used for crimes. It's being sent yes. someplace else. Or I guess it could be turned into an ironic like candy jar. I have no but idea. But I don't think it is. Well, you can, you know, mix your sodas with it or on average an AR-15 costs eight fifty. I actually didn't know that. Still relatively cheap, isn't it? Uh, it's so, kind of skid. I don't like that. It should be more expensive than that. Well, okay. I bought an iPad for like $1,000. Mm -hmm. Yeah, there's no constitutional right to an iPad, I but guess. But actually, the pen is mightier than the sword. <laughs> so I bet I could do so much more with my incendiary ideas on yeah, the internet. That's why I, I, I just keep on, when they're like, sign this document, I just shoot it with my Armalite 15. Do you have an AR-15? No, I don't uh, particularly want one. If I got a big gun, it would be a Magnum. It would be huge. Yeah. It would have exactly six bullets in it. Yeah, cool. And I'd be ready to use one special one just for me. I just want a tank. We cool. know that. Yeah, I know. I've been talking. I was looking City, with Marcus. City I was talking. still not good enough for tanks. Can we buy an LPN, like, backhoe? Well, we could buy a backhoe. I was trying to figure out. I wanted to buy a backhoe. <laughs> yeah. Because no, the no, idea, because, like. But you I'll, can't. But that's not. That's, well, it's not, like, fun. And yeah, it is. When the shit yeah. goes down. Yeah, but. It when the shit goes down, we got no a fucking bug out video. It's 15 grand for backhoe, yeah, man. Yeah, but it has no offensive capability. No, yeah, it does. Well, it's about spinning. The whole point is, again, make them shoot you, right? Like, you have to make sure you're not aggressively attacking the police. They're attacking the backhoe. Yeah, yeah. Well, I don't know how well farmers do in war, um, judging by Ukraine, not, like, great. But so Varnum, uh, he'll be appearing in court. And then he uh, he says he's not going to enter a plea until he gets there because he really wants to. That's the cliffhanger. That's what, oh, wonder what he's going to say. In and there. then Cloutier, she uh, they pleaded, pleaded not guilty Monday during her arraignment on the charges of kidnapping. Uh, the investigation began at 1130 a.m. And that's when there was a report of a woman in a vehicle whose hands were bound together with duct tape. So they didn't do a good job. And the woman also had a bag. With I feel duct like tape they were letting head. emotions take over. 
I also think that they just like had her in the back of a car where the cars have windows. Again, that's what I'm saying. They weren't thinking clearly because they were so uh, sad that I guess that they're because maybe well, according to here, it says that the AR-15 was given to the, the man. It was given to him for his fifth birthday. And it was like it was his <laughs> childhood AR-15. And he was very, very upset oh, that it was gone. Ducky. Yeah. yeah. And he hit so sad because, yeah, think about the emotional quotient. He just was. He was just so overwhelmed. Yeah. Apparently, she was in the back of a Toyota pickup. And then the woman told police that Cloudier and Barnum, when they bound her, they said that they were going to kill her with gas. Yeah, I bet so. I, again, everyone's mad. I don't know. But according to the everyone's charging really, documents. Everyone's really, really upset. Yeah, she said, she said she stated that while we were going down the road, he pulled over and put a rag over her face that smelled like spray paint. I, just, I don't think that these people know what they're doing. I am thinking, um, again, everybody is being rash. And then she stated she pretended to pass out. And then that's when Varnum taped her even more this and a, put a, just a group bag of, over her head. There's a group of... What was that movie? Not they, the brightest group of you. That Nick Cage. The, the, I was thinking of Thank You for Smoking. Yes, Just Thank You for Smoking stupid. is great. It's Everyone really good. is so dumb. But I was thinking of Trapped in Paradise, yeah, which is also great. Um, um, before we end, anyway, before we begin your segment, well, I, these people, I'm certain their lives are going to be great. But I wanted to start a <laughs> debate with you, Kissel, on this subject because I don't know where you stand. Because this is a subject that I find really weird, uh -huh. and I don't know. I don't know how I feel. Maybe I'm just reading far too far into it. Is this the Disneyland removing the zippity doo dah lyrics? I feel like again, that's a whole other. That's a whole I feel thing. like it's like a 45 minute video that we're featured in, <laughs> where we're, it's just like us again, just looking like how Scientology painted us with like the faces what? red and and devil horns and stuff. Hate. Um, but I. So the story. So the Kansas Humane Society. Yes. What they're doing? They're doing a fundraiser. And they're doing it, and it's this this thing, this funny little thing. Yes. And they're doing a fundraiser, uh, yeah, and, and it's called Only Paws. And what they're Ugh. doing is selling feet pics of dogs. I think it's cats. absolutely disgusting, and I think the people behind this need to be arrested. Look, you see how it's blurred out, right? No, so I they're doing this they thing where they're arrested. blurring out the feet. Now I know that that's a cute internet thing to do. Like now, fans, I get right? it. Yeah, they no, sell it's, the feet. Yeah, only Paws. Yeah. And it says for every hundred dollars, people donate to Only Paws, a nonprofit shelter based in Wichita. Right. It's going to release a quote unquote. This is according to Kansas.com, a fascinating website. <laughs> it's called a collection of our spiciest toe beans uh, from a variety of species. I think they should all be arrested. Um, they said yeah. all the notions are going to support the quote unquote sexy animals in their care. It makes me disgusted. Now, this is my thing. Again, they're not inherently sexual. These are cute in its way, right? They're I animals. like toe they're beans. Yes. I like toe beans. I love cats. I love dogs. I love all animals, to be honest. Can I have you say on mic, I do love toe beans. I don't know what a toe bean is. A toe bean is the these. These are toe beans. These are toe beans. I'd have to get to know it first. This is a toe bean. That's a toe bean. Oh, it's the thing on, it's the paw. It's a toe bean. That's called a paw. Okay, well, do you, will you please say, I do love toe beans? I feel like you're setting me up for something. I'm not. I'm not. There's nothing I don't love to, them. I, they're, they're you don't love. No, a, I love a, a cute I would love a good paw. cat. No, they're utility. They're, that's like me saying, like, oh, I love the, I love your bottom of your foot. No, it just supports you. I like that it helps the dogs run or cats run and, and pounce. But you don't find toe beans to be I specifically don't find enjoyable. Animals to be sexually attractive. I'm not saying that you're hard for the toe bean. Well, that's what that's what this is implying. Well, what it's saying. I think this is actually very misguided. Uh, well, well, no, but this is according to the Kansas Humane Society. Because this is the one of their you posts. Get, the reason you get a cat or a, a beagle chihuahua like I have is to kill squirrels and rats. But I want again to throw it to our audience. Side stories l p o t l at gmail .com. How do we feel about this? Again, it's not inherently. Does this sound inherently sexual to you? <sighs> what kind of spices are on these beans? Because this Ugh. comes from a social media post from the Kansas Humane Society. What kind of spices are on these beans? Because these paws are on fire. Fire emoji. Fire emoji. <laughs> you still have a chance to help pets and see more saucy pics. No! Just like these by no! donating to our original fundraiser post. And it has that emoji face up. Uh, yeah, yeah, right. That one, right? No, no it's disgusting. No, we and I still think have is, some pretty, no, I'm not, no. pretty scandalous pet peats waiting for you. Hashtag only boss. Oh my god, no! Every this is better be a cat fishing. But now uh, this, you look at this now here. We I just need broke to get Chris 3, Hansen. I Chris Hansen needs to like be like hey, again. I, do you want a cookie? I'm going to do a little bit of just saying straight up. Kansas Humane Society has never once said to have sex with these animals. 
They've not said to masturbate to these, all right? Again, because some people love toe beans. Now, this guy, this is another one says, we just broke 3,000K. Let's fluffing go. You guys deserve a wiener dog, corgi, a pig, tongue out with crossed feet pics. Now, you see, oh what I find God, the weirdest is so this gross. one picture of a, of a pig's butt. Right now, you see a pig's butt there, and you see these other beans. Dude, I'm from Wisconsin. And and every year, out. there's a fucking story about somebody fucking a goddamn cow or a pig. Of course. This is not good. Now, they're saying that uh, the, but other people are sending in their cat and dog feet pics as well. Why? Which I think is fine. They, they raised 15 grand. I don't give a fuck, bro. I just wonder because, yes, of course. Does part of it make every particle of my body like cringe? It is disgusting. Yes. But their other thing is that again, it's not inherently sexual. It is because for they're a making it be splayed out. I mean, it'd be different if they said like, "Check out these this corgi's wide gaping holes." That's what they're doing. But dude. I'm saying no. If it's I also words, again, I've talked, holes, I've talked about this on our Scientology episodes. The sexualization of the corgi, corgi butts drive me nuts. It's disgusting. I'm just again, I do understand you like the dog. I do feel you know Wendy's got a, her little butt. Yes, but again, it's they, no no one said anything about holes. No one said anything about sucking action. No, but feet are notoriously sexual. Uh, but I feel people like people love feet. Maybe that's it's your a fetish. bias. You were you're saying some people. I'm I don't not a find, foot person. I'm not a foot person either. I I mean I but like a lot weirder stuff than that. But I do what like what kneecaps. Really? Yeah, I'm a big kneecap person. No, actually, that is true. I uh, like hands. I like a nice set of hands. Women like hands. attached. Women like big hands. I like. Well, they like. I like a work at my own time. Women see hands as penises. They oh, sure. They better. They it's half. Half. It's most of my penis is my mm -hmm. hands, right? And then you've got the yeah feet. I don't really understand. I mean, but at the same time, if you have all jacked up feet, I don't like it. But I, I don't, don't like. It depends on how. It's I not mean, a like, deal breaker. But yeah, if you have like mashed up toes, I think it'd be weird. Like, I mean, I don't want to look then at. There them. were many cultures where that wasn't that appreciated. I Either don't know. Way, it depends you're on, beautiful. Everyone is beautiful. There there's some, listen, I, I, I reminding you. to our audience, no matter what, there's somebody out there, no matter what, will fuck you. And that's really, really important for you to remember is that you could go out tonight and get railed no matter what you look like, because there is a fucking sternum for every throat. Um, but no, I, I think it's great that the Wichita Humane Society has raised some money. I wish that they didn't do it. With uh, such a uh, it's disgusting the, tongue in cheek, it's the only method. pause thing. Yes, I guess it's the, that's what makes it sexual. Is calling it the only pause thing because people are masturbating to those versions of feet pics. And if you were yes. selling a bunch of like, if this was an orphanage and you were selling oh, a bunch it would of be, like kids, it'd be illegal. Yeah, I mean, yeah, it'd be illegal. Yeah, that's I feel like is the one of the big differences uh, yeah. is that if it was or if it was like an old folks home, old sure. And you're saying, and if it was hospice, I don't and you're know. You're trying to sell feet pics of all these fucking. I, I, cancer patients. I spend the majority of my day <laughs> cuddling dogs, and uh, but it's just not a the idea of even remotely coming close to sexualizing any of but that. But again, it's that the is, posts uh, aren't sexual; they're cute because people like toe beans. <sighs> just okay. Let's go on to hero of the week. So Blaine Parker, yeah, he's not the fucking hero. Okay, no, but never, he, never a man. But he found a big clam in his on the Florida coast. And wanted to turn it into clam chowder. All right, so now guys, this clam. So first of all, just understand before we start, this is all about a fucking. This hero is a clam. It's a little Don't actual spoil it. clam. So the name of the clam is his new friend, Aber Clam Lincoln. Well, and also, don't forget to listen to my podcast. And he said <laughs> Parker found this clam. It's 214 years old. How does he know? Because he asked it. He asked his and fucking was, yeah. You look at his driver's license. It was born in 1809. Yeah, it had a little buggy drive, driver's license. And a Florida man and his family they found this gigantic clam at Alligator Point in Florida. This go, this is broke. This was broken by the Tallahassee Democrat. And the Tallahassee Democrat, because nothing else is going on in Florida. Nope. And this is honestly when you're no longer allowed to blog about any. Uh, the, any real thing. This is what all of their news is going to turn into. Yeah, yeah. This is going to be <laughs> all the news we get from Florida. So Blaine Parker, he told the Tallahassee Democrat that he found the clam over President's Day weekend. <laughs> and, uh, hence, Hi, my Abraham, music, Clint, Abraham Clam Lincoln. <laughs> just, just, and well. look at that. He thought, oh, well, this clam's big enough for two full servings of chowder. It's just one clam. So it is. And that's why it's so amazing. It could have two full servings of chowder it come from it. It just doesn't make he any says, sense. We were just going to eat it, but we thought about it a while and figured it was probably pretty special. 
so we didn't want to kill it. It's just a clam. So Parker, a member of the volunteer group, I don't AmeriCorps, even understand. It's just a, it's a up, big clam. He ended up bringing the clam to the Gulf Specimen Marine Lab in Pensiaia, Florida. This is a lot of work. And Parker. So they took the clam to go age it? The lab realized that Parker indeed found a six inch, 2.6 pound clam estimated to be 214 years old. Just, the clam is fucking huge and he's happy to be holding it. And oh yeah, he is happy to be holding it. The is, way he, he is holding it. It looks like he's just getting married. Yes, it looks like he found a big ass clam. Well, I'm and looking so at the, the world's biggest The lab clam. wrote, age can be calculated by the number of layers on the shell with each layer representing a year. Blaine counted 214 layers on Abraham Lincoln's shell, meaning this clam was born in 1809, the same year as Abraham Lincoln, hence its name Abraham Lincoln. I think that that's really nice. And isn't that fun? So the lab added that most ocean quay hog clams uh, weigh about half a pound. Whoa. And this one, of course, weighed a lot now, more. No, this is the quahog, right? World's biggest quahog clam right well, now. It was in 2006. Yeah, right here. The quahog, man, oh, he's like, well, holy moly, that's a big quahog, according that's to the University of Rhode Island. One. And they said they found one that was, it was 7.75 ounces. It was nicknamed Ming. Whoa. And it was estimated to be alive in 1499 during the Ming dynasty. But is it still alive? I believe it's dead. So. Uh, there you go. Uh, well, this is the thing. So the clam during the process of, let me just ask. So in the process of taking this clam out of the water to take it down to go look how old is it, it no. died. No, I think this one's still alive. There's no way it's still alive. No, clams, dude, clams are resilient. That's why it's fucking 200 years old. Uh, yeah, because it was in the water. No, they can keep it in the water. You just got to count the stupid ass rings on it. Live outside. I don't think that that is true. They can live outside the water. I bet you for a month and a half. Two weeks out of the water. There you go. I just feel like go. they took it out and then they killed it. it was they like, didn't kill it. They left it alone. All right. Hey, I mean, I don't think he made clam chowder out of it. No, he didn't make clam chowder out of it. And then he's just going to keep it on his fucking. He's going to keep it on his mantle. Because to be honest with you, it probably doesn't taste very good. Pocahontas was wrong. That's what, what it shows. Us. It just shows you her? again. Pocahontas. What does that have wrong. to do with her? I'm just saying, man. What was she wrong about? Look, we this man just took a piece of the very nature itself. Now it just became a fucking paperweight in his house. That was a 214 no, year old clam it's with gonna bills, be state, it's and gonna, now it's just a paperweight in this man's fucking house. They're gonna put it somewhere that uh, hopefully it can live. Where you throw it back in? No, it's it's dead. It's not dead. It's still alive. Do we know this to be certain? Yeah, because otherwise it wouldn't be fucking here of the week. Is Aber Clam Lincoln still alive? Yeah, it is. And it's reproducing. No, it's, not Abraham Lincoln. You fucking no. Not Abraham Lincoln, Google. Abra Clam Lincoln. Google sucks. Fuck dude. you, fucking Google. How dare Google. you? you? How dare trash. you think I type in Abraham Lincoln? I read an Lincoln article so recently. Lot. Google was like, maybe you, I'm not so sure about the AI. Google that they're creating the end of the fucking world. Well, I watched a new thing. There was a there was a little expose talking about <sighs> AI led uh, chatbots for banging their. In the, yeah, I know. But all they're about just it. not. Yeah. They're not ready. Buddy, We're not ready for prime time. They're going to be here in two months. They'll be ready. I mean, who oh, knows? Dude. As, as, as anyway, long as go. I'm getting reservations. That's all that matters. All right. Well, let's go on to emails. Yes. 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 Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Remember when emails were a new thing? I remember. My first email address was in 2000. Oh, sure. I think mine was in. That's a long time ago. Mine mm -hmm. was in high school. Mine was definitely before that. Mine, mine was, was freshman year of college. That was your first email address? Yeah, what was the point? I had one when I was younger because I was uh, I was meeting all these great young kids online. <laughs> oh, man, a lot of these meetups. You'd be surprised. Their dads would show up instead. Yeah, some Next of us Subway you know, sandwiches. Yeah. Just being like getting taught how to fuck by this guy I just met. Weird. All right, here comes some listener emails. Now, what's scarier than losing your wedding ring? I don't know. Like so many things. It's like one of the so biggest scares. so many fucking things. That's not even in the top well, 1,000 things. You know what's hard about losing a wedding ring is that it's the symbolism attached to the the ring so it's not just a normal no, thing you buy a if new you one and the then ring, you, but then you build new memories and it's still just an object i god i just need to well, i'll i'll call you if it ever happens to me again i'll call you have you lost it before no but i almost lost it once but you, it is a thing but this is a okay, story about right, I'm just but your love is more powerful than a ring and natalie can't wait for that call i can't wait to have you to patch you in be like and baby here is my dude lawyer Ben Kissel. Who cares? <laughs> Come on. Is his yeah. dick the same? Did his balls change? He didn't lose those. <laughs> Here we go. I've been married three goddamn times. 
times. <laughs> I just say I added the goddamn. Oh, that's good. The first time to a woman who was named Catherine when I was too young at 21. We met working at the same restaurant in Victoria, though she was a Vancouver gal at heart. And we eventually moved to Vancouver before getting married so that she could attend Emily Carr and I could start my undergrad at UBC. And when I proposed, Catherine wanted me to do the traditional thing and ask her dad's permission. I wasn't crazy about it and agreed. Really good, yeah. Right? And when I asked him, he answered by giving me his wedding ring and he's saying I should use it to marry his daughter. Ugh, no. Right? This was Keith an immense man of Scottish heritage with Popeye forearms from working on the owner and as the skipper of a couple of different commercial fishing boats. Now, he couldn't wear the ring while working on the boat, so he said, you might as well use it. I don't want to use it. And we had it's a like big traditional weird. wedding. Yeah, it's, it's, it's different. Yeah. It's Canadian. And I indeed used the ring. Now, we need to flash forward about four years. Catherine graduated from Emily Carr, specializing in computer animation, graphic design. Who cares? Catherine's fucking gone, man. Yeah, let right? Catherine go, you let dude. Her, you fucking, who Swipe cares? Swipe number one. You got right. two more to go. Fuck her, dude. Yeah. All right? She broke your fucking heart, dude. We don't need to hear because Maybe. especially find out she'd been having an affair with her boss oh, the entire time, so they got divorced. That'll happen. All right? Yeah. No kids. I kept a boat. She kept the car, right? That's so what he did. lost that one. Unfortunately, because the car's more useful than a boat, but I can see how a boat helps a you go away from your problems. Easier. Yeah, but we don't live in a river world. Right? So. Not anymore. Now, a month or so went by, and one summer night, I was sitting on the stern of my boat, having a beer and a smoke after evening up at the marina pub, playing in a weekly darts tournament. It was calm <laughs> and warm with a fat moon. And my gaze regarded the wedding ring that I was still wearing. Now, why was I? Why were you still wearing it, man? I don't know. Said, I, you know, I didn't want her back. I was glad it was over. It was true that I, I like the ring and I like wearing it. But it was time to move on. Right. Right. Impulsively, I took it off and then I threw it in the river. You threw right? it. Now, right I could there. still hear the splash and recall the spreading ripples throughout the reflected moonlight. And good riddance, I thought. Uh -huh. Ah, fucking cheating, bitch. Wow. Let me live on a fucking, let me live on a fucking boat. Well, oh, no, I got to live on a fucking boat. Like I'm some kind of fucking fish. Could have pawned it, maybe bought a car. No, no, I just improvised all the I know, but he huh? shouldn't. So time went by. About a year later, I met a new he someone. He did throw it into the lake. He did. Yeah. So right now, sometime after that, I moved into her place and we sold the boat because that's what a new wife is going to make <laughs> you do. And then this was Aileen, perhaps the most upbeat and gregarious person I've ever known. Still second wife, so it doesn't fucking matter. It doesn't matter. You know there's one more coming. Was like, it's yeah. like, we know that there's another coming. I think, so I think he's really attached to his wives. <laughs> all right. So, kind of, all right. so she said, one day I get a call from Catherine telling me that her dad had died in a fire aboard his boat. Very difficult. <laughs> I mean, could she stab Wait a second. Man? Now, your boat's on fire. Now, I see a way out of this. <laughs> I, I, How do you die a in long, a fire I'm on a boat? It's a long story. I'm certain it's a long story that he doesn't care because it's his first wife's dad, right? Wow. So, I was like, yeah. So, she said, because she wanted the ring back. She called me and said, can I have no, the ring No, you don't get back? the ring back. Right? But, but you fine. know. And he said, you know, and I, I'm not proud of the fact that I didn't tell her that I'd thrown it in a river. Who cares? And I don't know. Instead, I took the cowardly way and I said I'd look for it. She cheated on you with her fucking, who cares? This is, this is Canadian divorce rules, <sighs> right? And a week went by and she called again. No, I still hadn't found it. And it went on for another month until I found myself promising that I'd go through, do a thorough search of everything. Right? He knows he's it. lying. All right. He says, yeah, he said, I've changed a lot since then. Who cares? I think you were trying to get her back. You saying here that you weren't trying to get her back, but I think you were trying to, to try to reel her back into the boat. I don't even think he has to right? change it all. I think he's a fine guy. It's so, just no, of course not. No, I did. This, I, I don't think you're incorrect. You actually technically this is your ex wife. It's over. You throw the ring to. in the. I mean, again, pawn it and get a car. It's but. also weird that you were wearing the ring and not her wearing her father's ring. But I digress. I don't think that it's all the thing. Yeah. I didn't do the search, right? Yeah. Just show I wouldn't be lying. I bet that I did do it, sir. Right? <laughs> and as uh, I started looking, no, if you're lying and you know where the ring is, you don't have to do this. You could just, again, you could just let time pass and then call again and be like, didn't find it. But again, mm. he's trying to keep a verisimilitude, right? Okay, good. And then I had to, I felt doubly pathetic because I'm looking. I had to go through all this stuff as I moved off the boat. I was literally opening boxes and rifling through them, which I had done exactly the same thing a few months ago. I was reflecting on this. And I opened up, I had this jewelry box. I opened up my jewelry box and it was a silver finished cardboard box with a lid that had once had a pocket watch or something, right? Fascinating. All right, I had it. It's just a long... 
But yeah. basically, he when goes through this series. When do we get to number three? He looks at this fucking pile of jewelry. Yeah. And at the very bottom of the box, he finds the fucking ring wow. from his father. Right? Wow. That's, but that is creepy, right? That's like fucked up, right? I think he, he was fucking hammered, but maybe he didn't. I think he might. Alcohol might have been involved. He was hammered after a dart tournament. And then he, you probably, because think about how torn you are about lying to this woman that you don't give a shit about anymore. And so we feel like you probably went to throw it and you went, ah, Best keep it. He was lying like, to himself. You were lying whole to yourself time. the whole time, but who knows, right? All right, but now, you, it, it was three. freaky, right? Um, that's as far as it goes. I, I think I, I hope the second wife lived, because he didn't say anything else. This is just the crux what of the story. What about wife number three? I just find it interesting that the, the that that the story that he found the ring after he threw it away. That that's the story. That's the story. Fascinating. All right, great, fantastic episode all around, say, this, start yeah, to finish. Really, nothing but yep. one of the top episodes we've ever done. Absolutely. All right, well, I think it's time for Triple L. Absolutely, you got to love every day knowing, yeah, sure, you don't need a plan. Not when you have a full-time media job. You don't got to have a fucking plan because all you got to do is laugh. Laugh your way through that shit, right? Uh -huh. Because True. you do. Because all we do, we, we laugh a lot, don't we? We do, we have to. We have to, because if not, you know what we're doing? Not living. That's true. Because you have got to laugh every day because if you're Ooh. frowning, it's a waste of lips. Well, I mean, and I, we are doing our best here, all right? And the struggle to stay mentally well that's hard. in a sea of garbage, you Absolutely. try it. You try it on for size. No, Henry, you do make me laugh every day. You do make me laugh There's every day. Like, and you know what? We want to don't see. I think about something that makes me laugh. I do too. Something that you did. Maybe this something the way you farted. Sure. Maybe way you know. don't fart that much, but. Okay. You know, okay. God, just thinking about. I remember a picture of you when you broke up. I saw that picture of you saved on my phone when you, when you and uh, Maura broke up back yeah. in the day when you were like, when long term. 15 year, 15 year memory. I there. have that picture. That's my contact photo of you, and it's this like extremely bereft photo of you alone in that tiny room when you lived in the little closet yeah. room with the single well, bed that's, that's with really you nice. with no pants on and it's you holding up a bag of all of her stuff in a garbage bag and that's my contact photo. Now that was you. not being rude. That was the best bag I had. Um, so there you go. She was getting the Ben Kissel Royale treatment. <laughs> all right, everyone. Well, thank the Cross you. City Move. Absolutely. Guys, what a great episode. Come and join. See more of this scintillating comedy. Mm. April 8th. Go to Get It Made LA slash Disaster Man. You will see Woo. a screening. We, we, we're doing a little bit of a thing there at the Beverly Hills Theater. It's going to be fun. Wait. Check it out. Uh, and then March 8th. This is already, we're, uh, we are currently live on stage in Hollywood doing Classy Night Out. And it is fantastic. Ooh. All right, everyone. Thank you for listening. And thanks for supporting the stream again. Every Tuesday, 8 p.m. PST. Yep. All right, everyone. Hail yourselves. Have they did. Congratulations. Bye. Talk you. to you all soon. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. This show is made possible by listeners like you. Thanks to our ad sponsors. You can support our shows by supporting them. For more shows like the one you just listened to, go to lastpodcastnetwork.com.